Pitch Black from the year 2000 was the unexpected sci-fi hit that really launched Vin Diesel's career as an action star. A relatively small-scale film that accomplished a great deal on a modest budget and took what was essentially a horror thriller movie and put it in an interesting science fiction setting with a unique spin on the format. The film was successful enough financially given its $23 million budget that it would spawn two sequels, 2004's The Chronicles of Riddick and 2013's Riddick, also starring Vin Diesel. The second film, The Chronicles of Riddick, really tried to do too much. It was a major departure from the first film's relatively intimate setting, becoming too grandiose and trying to introduce this huge intergalactic mythology that was a bit like Dune meets Lord of the Rings or something. Riddick's backstory was also retconned to explain that he was more than just a convict who'd had some work done on his eyes to allow him to see in the dark, but he was in fact an alien from the planet Furia. The film wasn't financially or critically successful and felt like it belonged to a different universe than the first film. So for the third film, Riddick, the filmmakers reverted to a similar format to the first film, a simple story on a much smaller budget taking place primarily in one location of a desolate planet, just like Pitch Black, with the same kinds of horror elements, and it worked a lot better. But ultimately, Pitch Black was the best film in the series, and the other movies were really just capitalizing on the success of that first film. I rewatched Pitch Black recently, and I must say, it works well, it's held up over the years. Some visual effects have dated a little bit, but to be fair, the film did have a very small budget. A lot of the film takes place in low lighting, given that the planet is undergoing an eclipse, and so it, it's just as well because this helps to hide some of the production limitations, while also conveying a claustrophobic feeling that really sells the terror of the aliens. So a passenger ship called the Hunter Gratzner, with passengers in suspended animation, is damaged by micrometeorites. The captain is killed and two crew members are awoken and they're forced to make an emergency landing on this barren planet. Most of the crew survive and it's a ragtag group of colourful characters. Caroline Fry, played by Rada Mitchell, is a docking pilot who is forced to take command of the situation upon arrival, though she harbours regret that she very nearly jettisoned the entire crew in stasis during the crash landing. Mr. Johns is a merc pretending to be a cop. He's very much out for himself and is determined to capture Riddick for a payday. Johns is played by Cole Hauser. Riddick is obviously played by Vin Diesel and is the anti-hero of the film. He may be a murderer, but he's the best chance they have of getting off the planet alive. Then there's a teenage girl who pretends to be a boy named Jack, played by Rihanna Griffith. Keith David plays an imam who is accompanied by some young boys he's bringing on a pilgrimage to New Mecca. Louis Fitzgerald plays a flamboyant antiques dealer. Claudia Black of Farscape plays Shaza, a prospector. Her partner is Zeke, played by John Moore. So there's all kinds of characters in there. The format of the film is kind of like a slasher movie in that there's an ensemble cast of characters who are being picked off one by one by a big scary horror thing. In this case, the horror element is not a person or a ghost or a monster. It's alien creatures that only come out in the dark. But stories like this have their spiritual origins in nightmarish folklore and ancient mythology of haunted woods and forests at nighttime, instinctive sources of primal human fear, the endless possibilities for dangerous predators in the dark. The survivors quickly realize that water is in short supply on this desert world. They discover an abandoned geological research outpost, complete with a small craft, but it's out of power, so they need to find an energy source. So the plan is hatched to scavenge for a suitable power source to get off the planet, and thankfully they also find a source of water. But they have two problems. Number one, Riddick, a convict who seemingly can't be trusted. And number two, there are dangerous creatures that only come out at night, and the planet is about to undergo a major eclipse, despite the fact that this planet has three suns. What are the odds they'd land right at this point in the planet's astronomical cycle? Talk about bad luck. The aliens kill Zeke, and initially his death is blamed on Riddick, but it becomes apparent he didn't do it, and moreover, they now need Riddick's unique night vision and resourcefulness to help them out. 
So there's all the raw ingredients there for great dramatic tension between the primary trio of Riddick, Johns, and Fry. As the aliens pick off a few more of the survivors, Johns suggests to Riddick that they use Jack as bait, to which Riddick responds by fighting him and leaving him injured and bloodied in the dark for the aliens to devour. Carolyn Fry's redemption arc is very much based around her regret at very nearly leaving her crew to die in the beginning of the movie. Like I say, she was going to jettison the stasis pod part of the ship. At the end, only herself, Riddick, Imam and Jack are left alive, and Imam and Jack are stranded in a cave while the aliens are outside, about to break in and kill them, obviously. Riddick appears perfectly willing to leave them there when he's about to take off in the craft all alone by himself. But Fry convinces him to go back for them. And a part of you can't help but wonder if Riddick was testing her to see if she truly was willing to risk her life to save them. In the end, that's exactly what happens. Her death is genuinely unexpected when you first watch the film. Because she's the primary female character, you just sort of expect that she's going to live. In the end, even Riddick is shocked that she was willing to die to save him also. Himself, Jack, Imam, they take off in the small craft. They're the only three left. And when Jack asks him what they should say to the authorities about Riddick's whereabouts, he says they should pretend he died on the planet, basically, indicating that he's willing to let go of his past and the man he used to be and perhaps start a new life. The film ends. Pitch Black has a simple plot from a tried and tested horror formula, and it visually looks good as a film as well. Some great cinematography, impressive use of a small budget, which I know I've said a few times now, a brilliant soundtrack, and the movie is paced and edited very well. It's an example of a surprise hit that didn't need a sequel because it works well enough on its own. Mind you, the character of Riddick could be adapted and thrown into different situations as a mercenary like Snake Plissken. The issue with the Chronicles of Riddick in particular is that that film didn't know if it wanted to be a direct sequel to Pitch Black or a completely different type of deep lore sci-fi movie all of its own. Pitch Black demonstrates that the sci-fi horror genre works best when the story and setting are kept simple. A unique protagonist anti-hero, a mysterious alien planet with an eclipse of its three suns and some alien creatures that only come out at night. Throw in a ragtag ensemble of characters and a healthy dose of distrust and tension and you've got a recipe for two decent hours of sci-fi horror escapism. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. And this movie proves it can all be done on a small budget if done right. So guys, let me know your thoughts on Pitch Black in the comments below. And for my Subscribestar supporters, I have a Subscribestar special on the state of Doctor Who and how the franchise arrived at where it is right now. That video is linked below for you to check out. I will be doing exclusive videos every month for my Subscribestar supporters for as little as $1 a month. So if you want to see all of my content, uh, please become a supporter. It's very much appreciated. And of course, it helps to keep the show going. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.